Hello everyone. The topic of today's discussion is calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor. So we'll be covering the topic under the following headings. So today the objective of the discussion is to learn the clinical, radiographic and the histopathological features of calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor and also to learn how to differentiate it from the other odontogenic lesions. So starting with the introduction, when we talk about odontogenic tumors, these are the tumors which take their origin from the histogenetic sources of tooth forming apparatus such as the remnants of dental lamina, the heart epithelial root sheath remnants such as the rest, the rest of malices, reduced enamel epithelium and the enamel organ. So it is very nicely said that the dental ontogeny that is the formation of tooth is recapitulated when we talk about odontogenic cysts and tumors and the development of the lesion can be predicted because Whenever there is failure of tooth development or there is abortive tooth development, it will lead to the development of odontogenic cysts and tumors. Before proceeding with today's discussion, we'll be having a brief discussion for the histological classification given for odontogenic tumors. In 2005, WHO classified odontogenic tumors into two broad categories, the benign and the malignant. In the benign category, it was further subclassified into odontogenic epithelium without odontogenic ectomism kind, odontogenic epithelium with odontogenic ectomism kind with or without heart tissue formation, and odontogenic ectomism kind with or without odontogenic epithelium. So, the calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor was categorized under the category of odontogenic epithelium without odontogenic mesenchyme. In the malignant category, it was broadly subclassified into odontogenic carcinomas and odontogenic sarcomas. However, in 2017, WHO reclassified the odontogenic tumors into two broad categories as benign and malignant. And to make it simpler, they have classified into three broad categories. One is of epithelial origin. The second, the mixed, which contains both epithelial as well as the mesenchymal component. And the third category, which is mesenchymal origin. So, the calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor is a benign odontogenic tumor which is epithelial in origin. So, let's start with the discussion of calcifying epithelial odontogenic tumor. When we talk about CEOT, it was first introduced by Dr. James J. Pinberg, after which the name of Pinberg tumor was given to CEOT in 1967. It is a benign odontogenic tumor which is locally invasive and it is characterized by the presence of amyloid-like structures along with some amorphous calcifications. So when we talk about the predilection, it represents only 1% of all ontogenic tumor. And there is controversy regarding the histogenetic origin of CEOT, that whether the origin is from the oral epithelium, from the reduced enamel epithelium. However, some of the authors have hypothesized that its origin is from the stratum intermediate cells of tooth germ. Also, there are literature which suggests its origin from the remnants of dental lamina. When we talk about its clinical presentation, it is usually a progressive painless swelling. When we talk about the gender predilection, it is equally found in males and females. It can be seen in any age. However, most, most of the cases are seen in the middle age and out of mandible and the maxilla. When we talk about the side predilection, mandible is more commonly affected. And in the mandible also, posterior area is more commonly affected. 50% of the cases of COT are found to be associated with unerupted impacted tooth. When we see the lesions radiographically, they can be poorly defined or they can be well defined radiolucency, mostly unilocular, rarely they can be multilocular. Also, the well defined radiolucencies are found to be associated with scattered radio opacity as it can be appreciated in the radiograph. Few cases of CEOT show irregular bony trabeculae, giving it a multilocular or honeycomb appearance. Also, there can be presence of flex of calcification in the radiolucent areas, giving it a drive and snow appearance, which is a characteristic finding for cases of CEOT. When CEOT lesions are found to be associated of, with impacted tooth, they lead to a mistaken diagnosis of dentigerous cyst. When we perform the specimen radiographic examination, there are scattered flecks of calcification giving it a drive and snow appearance, which is actually a characteristic finding in cases of CEOT. Coming on to the histopathology, when we talk about the histopathology, the characteristic feature of CEOT is the presence of strands or sheets of polyhydral cells with eosinophilic cytoplasm 
and also in between these polyhedral sheets of cell there is prominent intercellular breaches the characteristic finding in the cases of cot is the presence of amyloid like material also some of the areas in cases of cot may exhibit calcification giving the presence of lees gang ring formation so the presence of lees gang ring is another diagnostic feature of cases of cot also in certain areas we can appreciate scattered flecks of calcification which could be dystrophic calcifications and the characteristic microscopic feature which we have already discussed is the presence of eosinophilic substance which is interpreted sometime as amyloid sometime as glycoprotein basal lamina or enamel matrix so we can perform special stains such as congo red to see the presence of amyloid if the amyloid is present it will show the apple green bifringens in the polarized microscope talking about the treatment depending upon the size of the tumor either curettage can be done or the enucleation and the surgical segmentation can be done some cases may require resection as well although these uh, tumors are considered to be benign but they can be locally aggressive because some of the cases might show recurrence so the recurrence rate for such cases is 10 to 15% hence to summarize when we talk about calcifying epithelial oncogenic tumor it is a locally invasive neoplasm it is also known as pinbox tumor when we talk about its origin it can take its origin from oral epithelium reduced enamel epithelium stratum intermedium and remnants of dental lamina these tumors comprised of 1% of all oncogenic tumors when we talk about the gender predilection both the males and females are equally affected it can be seen in any age however the middle age is the more common age when we talk about the site mandible is more frequently affected in comparison to maxilla and in the mandible posterior mandible is more commonly affected clinically it present as a progressive painless swelling radiographically it is well defined unilocular radiosensis sometime associated with scattered radio opacity giving it a driven snow appearance when we talk about the histopathology so presence of polyhedral epithelial cells connected to each other with the help of prominent intercellular bridges presence of amyloid presence of lees gang rings also the presence of apple green bifringens under polarizing microscope for the presence of amyloid so these are the mcqs for the today's discussion please do attempt them and write the answers in the comment box thank you